Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Bex here today to share with you some books that I've acquired over the last few months. I don't have a ton, I think it's only seven. Yeah, it's only seven, which isn't a lot on booktube usually, but it, it's been long enough. I wanna share them with you. The first book that I wanna share with you is one that Les got me for my birthday, and my birthday was in April, so it's been a while. That's how long I've been slowly acquiring these books for. The book that she got me is The Muse by Jessie Burton, and I just have to comment on how gorgeous this cover is. Oh. And Les even wrote me a little note. She said, thought you might enjoy some highly detailed historical fiction set in England and Spain. Art, mystery, intrigue. So yeah, that basically describes this book. It is historical fiction. It follows two different women from two different eras. We have England in the 60s and Spain in the 30s. And there's this one painting that somehow ties them together. As Les said, there's going to be mystery and intrigue and I will hopefully enjoy all of that. The next two books I grabbed from my coworker because she was moving and she basically brought in a few bags of books and said, hey, take what you want. So I took these two. The first one is The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin, which I've seen this cover around, but I've never really paid attention to what it actually was. The little subtitle says, or why I spent a year trying to sing in the morning, clean my closets, fight right, read Aristotle, and generally have more fun. And I decided I'd actually read the little inside flap and find out what was going on. So this is a nonfiction book. It's sort of like a self-help motivational book, I guess. And I never read books like that. Like just not something I lean towards, but this actually kind of interested me just because of the way that she goes about motivating herself and trying to make her life better. She basically chooses something different to do each month that could potentially make her life more pleasant, more enjoyable. Each of the chapters are broken down by the month in which she focuses on a different part of her life and tries to do something to make it better. And I figured that was worth a try. Like once again, I got it for free. So if I don't love it, that's fine. I'll just send it off to my library book sale in October. But for now, I do wanna try this and maybe there'll be something from this that I can get and kind of apply to my own life. The other book is completely different from that one <laughs> in this book. It is 11 63 by Stephen King. This is hefty, huge, huge book. It is over 800 pages and it definitely feels like it's over 800 pages. This book has been out for a long time and it's definitely been sort of in the back of my mind for a bit because it does uh, focus on a very famous event in history. So we have our main character who is a teacher in Maine and he finds out that a buddy or a friend of his has this portal in a place that uh, in this like restaurant or something like that. And the portal is like a time machine kind of, you can walk through it and it'll bring you to uh, 1958. And the whole reason this teacher ends up going through this portal is because his friend wants him to stop the Kennedy assassination and find out what the world would have been like if Kennedy had lived. The one book that I received that was an advanced reader's copy was The Last Voyage of Poe Blythe by Ali Condi. And some of you are probably saying, um, that arc was sent out a long time ago. Why are you just hauling it now? Uh, that would be because it is an unsolicited arc. I did not ask for it from the publisher, but they sent it to me, so they sent it to my old address. So it took a really long time for me to actually get my hands on the book. After it was sent, this, this book was published in March of 2019, and I didn't get it until end of March, beginning of April, which is why it's now in this book haul. So yeah, this one's been floating around for a long time, just not with me, uh, but I did uh, read the back of it after getting it, because of course I wasn't expecting to get it, and it sounds like something that it intrigues me, it intrigues me. We follow a 17 year old Poe Blythe. She's a captain on this mining ship and her entire life at this point is fueled by the need for revenge and uh, her feelings of grief and anger. But it sounds like it might be a journey of moving past that anger and resentment and sort of moving on. I feel like I saw a few people haul this book, but I don't think I've actually heard anybody talk about whether or not they liked it. So if you have read this book, let me know down below what you thought of it. The last three books I picked up were thanks to an Indigo gift card. The first book is Transgender History, The Roots of Today's Revolution by Susan Stryker. I've wanted to get this book for a long time, but it's 
kind of expensive and it's not very big. So I was waiting for a gift card to pick it up and that finally happened. This is pretty much exactly what you think it is. It's a guide to transgender history since the 19th century. It covers a lot of different stuff, including the very basic, like terms, things like that. And then it also goes on to talk about uh, the transgender community formation, the history of medicalization, trans radicalism, uh, social change movements, stuff like that. So it's gonna cover a wide range of topics and uh, talk about major movements and sort of give you those basics as well, which um, I, I feel like I definitely need. I want that crash course in transgender history and then also to learn a bit more. And this is the book for that. I also love this cover. This is the second edition, which was released a couple of years ago. The first book, I guess, was very popular and very well received. And so they sort of updated it for uh, more recent history. My second to last book I have to share with you is good old YA fantasy, and that is The Rose Society by Marie Lu. This is the second book in the Young Elites series. I read the first one during the Femme Fantale readathon back in March of this year, and I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. I liked the direction that the book ended up going to at the end, and so I wanted to uh, see where it continued to. I can't say too much, because it is the second book, but in the first book we follow a group um, of young people, the young elites, and they all have superpowers, but they're not like the kind of the typical superpowers that you think of. They're a little bit more creative and fantastical than that. And our main character um, joins this group and she's kind of figures out more about herself after learning kind of late in life that she does have these powers. It ended on a much darker note than I was expecting, so I'm definitely intrigued to see where this book takes the story. I know there is one more book, so I think it's just a trilogy, but hopefully I'll like this book enough that I'll want to finish the series. And then finally, the last book I have to share is Obsidio by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the third and final book in the Illuminae Files trilogy. I read Gemina uh, earlier this year and having read Illuminae last year, so I'm ready to finish this series and see how it concludes. I really enjoyed Illuminae. I thought Gemina was good, not um, as amazing. And then with this one, I'm hoping that we have these two groups of characters. We have the characters that we were introduced to in Illuminae. We have characters we were introduced to in Gemina. And I believe in this book, they're really going to come together and work together to take down this company that uh, tried to destroy a planet and then destroy a jump station. So just basically big bad corporations coming after people who are just trying to live their lives every day. And the uh, thing to note about this series, if you don't already know, is that it is told in a mixed media format. So it's a really fast read, even though it is over 600 pages. And I love mixed media format books. So I'm really looking forward to finishing this one up. I will be picking it up in August. And then hopefully once I finish, I will do some sort of series review and really wrap up my thoughts on the Illuminate Files trilogy. Those are the books for my summer book haul. If you have read any of them and you want to share your thoughts, feel free to do so in the comments down below. I would love to hear what you thought of them. As always, all of our links are in the down bar. You can go check those out if you feel so inclined. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you later.